Hey guys, what's up? It's Matt with 86 Gaming, and we're going to be taking a look here at the Gigabyte G1 Gaming Phoenix SLI motherboard. Uh, just want to start off by saying this isn't for everybody. If you're doing your first build, you may have looked at these and these, these 250 to 350 and plus uh, motherboards. The 2011 3 socket is for the extreme people, and I just want to go ahead and say that this may not be something exactly what you're looking for. But uh, I'm going to go over it anyways because I think for what it is, it comes in at a great price and it is chock full of features. So if you are somebody looking to build on the extreme, then great. This is probably something you're looking for. Also, just to tell you before the B-roll starts, I did a lot of it. It's probably some of the longest B-roll you've seen. So if you want to skip ahead, I'll put something at this part of the video where you can just skip looking at how pretty it is and go right into me talking about it with some extra clips left or right wherever I put it. Anyways, guys, uh, let's get into the B-roll. Take a look. Hey guys, what's up? This is the Gigabyte G1 Gaming Phoenix SLI motherboard, the X99. It's a 2011 3 socket. What does this mean? This is an enthusiast grade motherboard. This is for the people that are really interested in hardcore everything. OC and trying to break records with your OC and just having everything as, as uh, best foundation laid as possible. And uh, there's a couple things I'll talk about with this. I'm not going to go over everything because to go over everything would probably take much longer than any of you have the attention span on YouTube to watch for. Ha! Anyways, uh, let's start with aesthetics real quick. Um, the white and orange theme, that's an interesting choice because I don't i don't know if everybody out there is really into white and orange, but you see a lot of color neutral boards from other, uh, other manufacturers. It's a strange thing to me. I like it personally. I think it's going to go great with what I'm doing, but I don't know if white and orange is for everybody. This is plastic on the side. This is plastic right here. This is an actual heat sink. This is a heat sink. It's anodized. What that means is it's going to be difficult to remove the color from, but you can do it with some easy off oven cleaner. Uh, put it in a bag and do that. Don't burn yourself doing that with the oven cleaner. It will eat your skin. Otherwise, ceramic uh, ceramic engine block paint would be fine to just take it off and paint over them if you wanted to change that color scheme. And some plastic safe paint for this would be great too, or you could probably just remove it. That's if you're interested in doing that. Uh, so let's talk real quick. If you're doing SLI, you have four sockets for your PCI Express, but on this board and most X99 boards, you have 16 two eights, and then this fourth one down here becomes dead to use. So you can do three-way SLI, and they include one of the ugliest three-way SLI bridges I've ever seen. It's a black PCB, nothing fancy, nothing special to it. And if you're going to buy an enthusiast board, I would have thought Gigabyte might have included something a little prettier than this because you're going to want to show it off, and not a lot of people are going to want to use this. So most people will probably buy aftermarket from some other manufacturer like MSI or I believe Gigabyte might even make some of their own. But this is just kind of a standard inclusion. It's thoughtful, it's nice, but it's not pretty and it wouldn't go very well, I think, with the aesthetic of somebody who's going to buy the Ferrari of motherboards. This motherboard is loaded with features, absolutely loaded with features, and I can't say enough about that. So if you have any questions of anything I don't cover, you want to know about something, leave me a comment down below and I'll get back to you about it. So going over a few things, you have two NVMe so sockets. God, I said NVMe, right? And then I messed up sockets. Jeez. 
two NVMe sockets down here. Uh, something I want to say about that real quick is I'd prefer to see those on the back of a motherboard. On some of the motherboards, they are on the back. I like that a lot better because they're going to clash sometimes with the aesthetic that you're going for, especially if you're buying an enthusiast grade motherboard. So your first one's going to be populated by your Wi-Fi wi wi card. Jeez, by your Wi-Fi card. And uh, your second one's 110 millimeter uh, NVMe SSD if you want to put it in there, your M.2. Um, going over a couple things, well, let's start with the, the input output here real quick. We've got five USB 3.0s, one USB 3.1, and a USB type A, which is your old legacy, good old timey fun stuff. And uh, the best feature of all the USBs, USB type C. USB type C on a motherboard just makes me absolutely happy. You can do so much with that stream from another computer, uh, charge another computer, transfer data at high rates, almost thunderbolt speeds. It's it's phenomenal, it's great, I love it. 24 pin connector on the side, you have a USB 3.0 here, USB 3.0 here. One of my favorite things they do, let me dig through this pile of crap they send with it. Oh no, I might not have picked it back up. But it's, uh, Gigabyte does this. I think specifically across all the boards I built, Gigabyte is good at doing this. They put this, uh, the little pin connectors uh, so that you can take all those single plus and minus pins and put them into an easy snap in and just plug it right in down there at the bottom You also have multiple fan headers all over this board too, which makes it really great uh, So going over a few things they give they don't give you just two SATA cables for all ten of those SATA ports on the back They give you four and then six in case you need that you have an RGB light extension cord right here If you want to have full control over RGB lights that you install as well as the motherboards itself so that the motherboard will talk to the lights directly keep everything looking good and in tone that's a nice inclusion for a nice rgb motherboard because they're all the rage right now and i think that gigabyte offering as much support for it as possible really makes up for this orange and white scheme that they got going on here but uh what else we got here we got something for if you're running sli and you want to have nice clean cables plug it's nice nice and thoughtful they're just male and female eight pin rails uh to connect it make it look good here's the thing i was talking about that i couldn't find um your two-way SLI bridge, this is in case you don't want to go three-way SLI bridge with the beautiful black PCB ugly uh, three-way SLI bridge they included. It's very thoughtful. I just think that if you're going to buy something nice and build something really nice based off the foundation of what you have here, you're probably not going to use that three-way bridge or this two-way bridge. Uh, the back plate, it's a nice gunmetal-y looking thing. It's pretty neutral as far as color goes, unlike the motherboard, which is orange and white, if you haven't noticed. And uh, everything's nicely labeled. It just looks good. If you're somebody that stares at the back of a computer, this will be great on there. Something I didn't like and I have a gripe about, this is me personally. You have your two, uh, your two um, antenna cables right here on the, on the back for the Wi-Fi. Now, I like the antennas just fine. There's nothing wrong with plugging antennas in the back. It can be a little messy if you have a lot of connections going back there. Where they have it oriented is perfect though because it's only below two of the USB 3.0s. It's not like it's at the very bottom and everything's gonna be dragging through the cables if you were to hang them there, but uh, I like the fact that, I like where they have it. I like it fine, and I, I thought it was a strange thing to have this whole, let's dangle a bunch of wires down and set a base up separately with a separate antenna for, for the Wi-Fi. Not a fan of this myself. I would probably just buy some aftermarket antenna and put it on there. Velcro cables, very thoughtful for when you're uh, cable managing the big massive bulky 24 pin 8 pin and your GPU cables behind the motherboard tray that'll come in really handy uh, what other things have I gone over or not gone over uh, sound uh, the amped up audio is gonna be is, is great this is something you'll see in most any motherboard nowadays anyways the the days of needing fancy sound cards is pretty much over it's pretty specialized now if you need something more aftermarket than what they already offer integrated on the motherboards and, and that's something nice. Something that's exclusive to Gigabyte that I've noticed too is you have this nice snap pin mechanism. Instead of that pull the plastic down, pop the card out, they snap in real tight and then you can just kind of get your finger in there and just unsnap it really easily, lifts it right out and that's that's something that's just convenient and I, I've only ever seen on Gigabyte boards so I'm sure they own, they own the, uh, the, the magnificent rights to uh, fancy snapping fancy snapping anything anyways 128 gigabytes running quad channel you have XMP profile for your memory up to 3200 megahertz and if I said that wrong I'll have to double check I'm pretty sure it's 3200 mega megahertz golly I'm, I'm just off my game entire tonight I guess but uh, 128 gigabytes about the cheapest processor you'll be able to put in here is an i7 6800k and run you about $440 if you're buying this board you're not just buying it because it's a motherboard you're buying this because you're an enthusiast and you want to build with it so please, if you're 
really considering something, I would definitely say do what's right and go with Gigabyte because if it comes to a big name, I'm going to trust them over most anything else. I mean, I know a lot of you are probably ASUS fanboys with your Republic of Gaming, but I've been buying Gigabyte Sports for years, a long time now, and uh, I, I, I will buy I will buy ASRock, I will buy MSI, but if it's something I really want to trust at the high end, it's going to be Gigabyte and uh, I'm, I'm ecstatic to have this, to be able to use it for the extreme build. Which, if you want to see some of the RGB features of it, there's going to be kind of a part two to this. It'll be a while down the road as I build the extreme build. But um, this is definitely going into that and it's going to be a part of that and the whole build log feature of building an extreme PC. So I'm really looking forward to throwing this in and seeing it in action. It's a great looking motherboard. Because I, I, I guess I'm going with the orange and white thing. I'm okay with it. It doesn't bother me. I just think for a lot of people, you know, you, you might not like the orange and white. So, not to keep touching on that, just an odd choice to me. Make sure you look closely at advertisements too. Check their website because if you look at it on like Newegg or something, it's going to look red and white. It is definitely not red and white. It is definitely orange and white. But it's a very good looking motherboard if this is the scheme you're going for other than what I mentioned earlier, changing the colors if, you, if necessary for you. So... That's pretty much all I'm going to cover as far as this goes for right now. If you have any questions, I don't want to keep burning time by talking about random features of it. Be sure and comment down below. I'm pretty good at getting back with people, so if you have any specific questions and you're wondering about this, if you're somebody looking to build on the extreme level, you probably don't have any questions anyway because you're an elitist PC jerk, and uh, I know how you guys are. And, uh, you know, go, go PC Master Race. And if you don't like this motherboard, it's because you're some ROG fanboy. Anyways, guys, have a good night, day, whatever it is, and I'll see you in the next video I do. Hey, guys, just real quick, I wanted to talk about this. Uh, thanks, Newegg, for sending me this for an impartial review on behalf of Gigabyte, who didn't know I'd be the unlucky person on their behalf to get it. And uh, I know there's some things I'm not going to touch on, but if you stay tuned, I am doing the extreme build with this, and uh, it'll be something for a giveaway. But this is a review product that came from Newegg on behalf of Gigabyte. I'm very happy to take a look at it and see what I think. It's not something I'll be keeping. Like I said, be doing an enthusiast build with it for a giveaway. And uh, if I encounter any problems while I'm doing that, I'll be sure to definitely let you know. And uh, thanks again for the opportunity to review this item. You guys have a wonderful day, night, whatever it is.